This machine weaves human hair to make mats. And this nonprofit has been using them for decades to help clean up oil spills. I'm going to show how fast it soaks up the oil, how clear water pours off of it, and the hair holds the oil. One kilogram of hair can soak up around five times its weight in oil. I'm just trying to get every nook and cranny here. I mean, this is literally just the hair from your head. But for most cleanups, oil companies use mats made from petroleum or spray chemicals that can make people sick. So if this method works, why aren't more oil companies using it to clean up their messes? Maybe the weirdness makes it, you know, just more interesting. I don't know. We went to San Francisco to see how hair mats can clean up worldwide waste. Matter of Trust has been making hair mats since the year 2000. Founder Lisa Gautier sources hair from salons in over 30 countries. <laughs> we, we have what we call the hair force. The donated clippings arrive in small batches. People mail this in every day. We get, I don't know, roughly 10 or so envelopes a day. We get a lot of blondes. As you can always tell when we get a package from Los Angeles, like right away, blonde, blonde, blonde. A lot of redheads in Boston. This is probably from Boston. We've been told that we got a package of underarm hair from Michael Phelps and the Olympic swimming team. <laughs> the team also uses animal fur. Clippings from alpaca, uh, buffalo, sheep, etc., llamas. Lisa and her team of felters start by cleaning the bags of donations. A lot of these were swept off the floors of hair salons. Pins, cigarettes, food, anything sharp, anything hard that might break the needles, all of that is garbage. I don't find it gross at all. I have a lot of hair and I, it doesn't bother me. Um, but, and I, you know, it's part of the charm of it. The felters lay out the human hair on this bed of dull nails and start to layer it with animal fur and fleece. We had to learn that we needed to not use sharp nails because it would start to slice the hair. And David invented this for us and he created it so that this thing just lifts up and it's really easy for us to remove it afterwards. We get out and make it more neat and faster. Then these machines tighten the fibers. The final product looks and feels like a doormat. Feel how like sturdy that is. It's really sturdy. The idea to use hair to clean oil spills started in 1989 with Phil McCrory, a hairstylist from Alabama. He was watching the Exxon Valdez oil spill in William Sound, Alaska. And on CNN, uh, it was showing the otters covered in oil and the water around them a little bit cleaner. Phil looked down at the oily head of hair he was shampooing. And it just sort of snapped for him. You shampoo because hair collects oil. I cut, you know, a pound of hair every couple of days. All of this could be going to clean up oil spills. So 10 years after Phil came up with the idea, Lisa partnered with him to scale up. At first, they stuffed nylon stockings with hair to make booms shaped like sausage. We're gonna stop doing as many booms as we have because they needed the nylons, which was again plastic, to hold them together. And we're gonna start doing more mats because mats add surface area. And so it just collects even more oil. That idea was put to the test in 2010 during the largest oil spill in American history. BP's Deepwater Horizon spewed four million barrels of oil into the Gulf of Mexico over three months. And Lisa's team got a flood of donations. We just started to get in ponytails from people just, you know, cutting it off. And then, of course, it was spring and it was shearing season. Um, and there's, turns out there's buffalo herds in the, in the United States. So there was a lot of fleece just coming at us in trucks and mail trucks and everything. It was, it was fantastic and overwhelming. We had 19 warehouses, about 100,000 square feet each from the Florida Keys all the way to Texas, right on the water because people are just so generous. Lisa says that a representative from BP reached out to her about a partnership. Insider asked BP about that, but the company didn't get back to us. In the end, the oil giant didn't deploy her hair booms. NOAA, a governmental organization, helped run the cleanup effort. 
scientists concluded that hair booms weren't as effective at removing oil as booms made with polypropylene, an oil derivative. The booms would get water, all of them get saturated in water, become heavier than the water and start to sink in the water. And then whatever oil they had on it sunk with it and recovery was very, very difficult trying to get those back out of the environment. You don't see that with the poly booms. You know, these polys do not absorb water like our hair does. BP instead tried to burn the oil off, but the fires only covered a small percentage of the spill. The company also sprayed dispersants to dissolve the oil and push it toward the ocean floor, where much of it remains today. And those chemicals can make people sick. But the consensus was that the oil was less harmful at the bottom of the ocean than washed up on shorelines. It's a trade-off. Sometimes they use the word net environmental benefit, but it's not net plus, it's net less bad. Still, locals along the coast used Lisa's hair mats to protect their beaches. The EPA told us that our BP response was the largest grassroots mobilization they had ever seen. And I was out there in you know, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Louisiana, Texas, and Florida. Eventually, BP was able to plug the leak on its own. But Matter of Trust proved it could mobilize thousands of people to address an epic catastrophe. The number of large oil spills has gone down in recent years, but Matter of Trust is now focused on a much more common problem, motor oil that drips from cars on the road and makes its way to the ocean. There's many ways that um, oil gets spilled, and the way that we concentrate on is oil that contaminates our waterways is actually just drips on the street, uh, mixing with rainwater and getting into storm drains. And those drips add up to over 180 million gallons per year. That's 16 times the amount spilled by the Exxon Valdez. Another use for the hair mats? The US Air Force is experimenting with them to manage chemical waste on its bases. They're doing a very large um, system with um, contaminated water reservoirs. And once the mats have done their job soaking up oil, how does Matter of Trust plan to get rid of them? It actually can break down into compost. It takes a really long time, and it's not our number one idea of, for the circular economy. What we think is better is if we have really clean incineration. Even as she grows her business, Lisa wants to make sure her hair mat process remains an open source technology. Phil McCrory had a patent which expired, and we all decided that it's everybody's hair and we're a public charity, and we thought that it was best not to renew it, and we just thought it's something that should be offered to the world. She's shipped her machines to more than a dozen partners around the world. We just had a really great meeting, a big Zoom meeting with all of our partners around the world, and everybody was super jazzed because I think we're just getting into that next level now where we're looking at how to send out more and more machines, and we have one in London, one in Wales, you know, France, Switzerland, Finland, Athens, Greece, Tokyo, Santiago, Chile. And she says it's possible to do this work from home. For us, cottage industry is the future. Anybody can make a little felted experiment just by putting a bunch of hair and fur in your shoe and walking around in it for a while. The heat from your heels and the sweat and the, um, and the jostling from your shoe, you'll, you pull it out and you will get a little, a little mat. And you've tried this. Oh yeah. <laughs>